Ladies and gentlemen, dear comrades, uh, it's great to see you again. Let me welcome you all to our annual Presidium meeting here in New York in the UN headquarters. These are special meetings. Uh, they give us the opportunity to exchange ideas on major issues and relate our work with the work that uh, goes on in the United Nations General Assembly. And I think this has been positive development for uh, our family. Uh, this is becoming an institution, and uh, many of us look forward to these meetings every September. I also am happy to welcome you this time here in New York as uh, Prime Minister of Greece. Last year when we met, it was just a few weeks before our elections, uh, you uh, wished me luck. Thank you very much. It, uh, we did have a, a comfortable majority, although, of course, we took over in one of the deepest crises Greece has gone through in the past decades. I don't want to uh, tire you with the details of the crisis and what we have done. Uh, we've had the possibility to talk about this in other meetings. Uh, of course, because of the mismanagement of the previous conservative government in Greece. However, my experiences uh, over this year have strengthened my conviction, my conviction, conviction that the world needs more so than ever a progressive agenda and certainly the will for democratic and global governance, coordination and governance. And this is obviously linked to the major issue we're going to debate uh, here in the UN this week, the progress of the Millennium Development Goals. And the Millennium Development Goals are extremely important for our progressive global organization, linked with the efforts that uh, we believe in, but also the efforts of the United Nations to eliminate world poverty, to promote open, non-discriminatory, multilateral trade, a financial system, however, which is viable, good governance, debt relief for most vulnerable countries, but also fighting uh, questions of inequality, helping women's rights, and of course the progress in reaching the targets of the Millennium Development Goals is interlinked with the capacity of the international community to address the financial crisis, and not only that, but other crises also, whether they're climate or food crisis or energy crisis, that many parts of the world are still facing. It's important to remember that some of the views, many of the views we expressed in the meeting of our presidium last year, here in New York and the year before, were unfortunately proven right. We were right to say that the global financial crisis needed strong will and real reform, establishment of supervision and control mechanisms, which unluckily are progressing very slowly. We have said that concrete initiatives are needed to make a difference, such as the global financial transaction tax or the carbon tax, green bonds, these we discussed. Some of these issues were brought up uh, in the last G20 summit, but they were given lip service and not the real support that is needed to become reality. So no final decision was made. If, in fact, we had decisions on such new and innovative financing tools, then this would be uh, an answer to, in fact, the question of how we finance the Millennium Development Goals. Without these tools, the global financial crisis has slowed down the pace of implementation of the Millennium Development Goals and, of course, the latest data of the World Bank show that the economic crisis impeded poverty reduction, is hampering progress of the Millennium Development Goals, and I would say we continue to see the concentration of wealth, power, media, more inequality, and I believe this is at the core of our global problem, our global problems, and even recession. We have to highlight that inequality is one of the major reasons we are seeing the problems around the world. The crisis is having an impact on key areas of the Millennium Development Goals, including those related to hunger, child and maternal health, gender equality, 
access to clean water, disease control. According to reliable estimates, it will continue to affect long-term development prospects well beyond 2015, as 2015 was the target the UN had set when this initiative, the Millennium Development Goals, was launched. So we're running out of time. And it is crucial that our movement raise its voice, our voice, our voices, and unite our efforts in order to, during the review summit, reach an agreement on the best possible action plan that will make things move forward. I said this morning on a panel discussion dis dis concerning poverty, hunger, gender e inequality, that we need to humanize globalization or we will put humanity herself at, in peril. And I believe uh, we have to humanize globalization so that we don't move into a politics of fear. Uh, uh, one thing we see, I think, in Europe, uh, the politics of fear unluckily have undermined some of the prospects of our progressive movement, such as uh, the recent elections yesterday in Sweden. Uh, we see the, uh, the outcome, which was not a positive one, but uh, behind this outcome, I think, were very much the politics of fear and xenophobia, racism, and the fear of losing the welfare system. But uh, unluckily, the champions here, by fear-mongering, was the right and not the left. I think we need to look at this. But in fact, uh, if we move into a politics of fear on our globe uh, and global politics, this will be uh, a solution for more conflict and not a solution for peace and prosperity. So it's imperative to move faster, and we need the will for global and democratic governance. This has been our motto for uh, many years. Uh, we have been proven right, if you like. Our family has, from the very beginning of the crisis, put on the table concrete proposals how we are going to face multiple issues such as the financial crisis, the climate change crisis, the food crisis, the issues of poverty, the issues of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, we are in the for forefront. And our ideas, I think, are more relevant than ever. We've outlined specific measures of how to support the most vulnerable countries during this difficult recovery process. We've presented ideas about coordinated responses to shield our countries from future similar crises. And again, we have been proved very relevant. The crisis, of course, has not only affected the progress towards the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals, it has also led to a shift of policymakers and public opinion away from the climate change agenda. And this is another risk. There is further evidence that the crisis might have longer lasting impacts in 2010 to 2015, the next five years. And climate change adaptation is urgently required to ensure sustainability and certainly to ensure the sustainability of these goals, the Millennium Development Goals. So it is unfortunate. Last year in Copenhagen, we didn't have the results we wanted. But also in the light of the United Nations Climate Conference in Cancun next November, there has not been real progress in these negotiations to reach a global, global and certainly not a binding agreement on climate change. However, the recent floods, the massive floods in Pakistan and China, all our solidarity to Pakistan, and uh, we welcome you here today, and we'll be hearing your report on this. But also the fires in Russia, the ecological disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, the cyclones in the Caribbean, during the last months created renewed urgency to address global warming. So I think this is, uh, again, showing priority that we have. On the positive side, uh, I can say that um, if we want to talk about the fight for equality of the genders, we're both honored and happy to uh, have seen the appointment of Michel Bachelet as uh, head of the uh, UN Women. And uh, uh, we have, certainly she has our full support, and I'm glad that she will be attending even for a short while this meeting. I think it may be her first public appearance as the, as the new head of this, uh, of this uh, spearheaded proposal. 
We also have our meeting, uh, which will be taking place at an important juncture, just uh, a couple of months before our council in Paris. Um, and we will be able to discuss the agenda, the issues we want to uh, unfold in Paris, uh, proposals that um, we put on the table and uh, help us reach strong and positive conclusions next November in Paris. So I wish you, I wish us all a constructive meeting here today. Uh, this, uh, there will be, as uh, Louise said, uh, uh, quite a few uh, heads of states and government and, uh, and uh, high officials and uh, members of our party visiting us and uh, participating, but uh, uh, part of the UN uh, is that they have a number of other responsibilities, so uh, we'll excuse them if they're in and out during, these, uh, during this period. So, again, um, uh, I wish uh, I wish all a um, constructive meeting. Luis, I give the floor again to you to um, yeah. open up uh, and give the floor to whoever may, may be asking.